Hello, it's Ryan Gordon, part 12. Uh, so last time we were here, we hooked up the volume slider. We're going to do the balance one today. Uh, hopefully this will be not super difficult. Um, we're going to do this as quickly as we can so that you can get on with your day. But first I got to tell you that we have uh, the skin that we've been using. This is from the Internet Archive. It's time to get rid of this guy um, because I'd like you to see what an actual, balance slider, an actual volume slider looks like instead of this cool trick. And also, this skin, more notably, its balance slider is broken it always goes to the right, no matter which way you tell it to go. So, And there's a good reason for that, which we might figure out today, but um, for now, this one's got to go. We're going to go on to uh, use this guy right here, Winamp uh, 2 Classic, which looks very familiar if you've ever used Winamp, the actual Winamp before. Um, so let's get rid of that, and let's get started here. Um, so here's what you need to know about... Uh, about the balance slider is that I, I said all this stuff about uh, all this hand wringing about how um, I was worried I was making the slider too generic when it's pretty straightforward because um, uh, the uh, volume slider here you know it always goes from this corner all the way across and I was like they're they're not they're never going to change that so like of course you know we don't need to make this as generic as we are but of course let's look at the balance slider real quick and you guessed it. It does not go from the top left, it goes from the top right. So obviously we're going to have to fix that to make that work with our uh, with our stuff. So let's go ahead and get started on all of this. Um, where'd you go? Okay, so here we are. Um, we already... Let's put this comment on here too, because you also don't own this here. Um, we already made a generic Winamp skin slider um, thing, a widget, if you will. Uh, we're going to have to make it a little bit more abstract here. So we're going to add, we have frame width and frame height, but we're going to add frame X offset and frame Y offset. Now both of these sliders still go from the top of the page, although one goes from the left and one goes from the right, but we're still going to put in a Y offset because who knows, they're going to screw you on the next one, I assume. So um, so it's good to just have that and uh, be ready for that when that happens. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go through here and search for the word volume because chances are, anywhere we've mentioned volume, we're probably going to also have to mention balance. So I've just added another num, which nicely comes down here and just gives us a second slider, a second widget by default in our skin, so we don't have to uh, mess around with it beyond that. Um, and then the next time we mention volume is in the audio callback, so we're going to do the same thing here and put balance in there, because right now this is sitting in a global va variable. But now that we have an actual slider that will handle it, a nice little UI widget. We do not need this to be in a global variable anymore. In fact, let's get rid of that global variable while we're here. Boom. Feels good, man. All right, so we got that. Let's get rid of these down here. Balance slider value. Value is now just balance. Now local we pulled out of the widget. So we'll just replace all those. Goodbye. Easy peasy. And again, this, this balance calculation is still incorrect, and we will fix that later. I have not forgotten, but we're just moving on. We're doing pretty things before we do boring things today. Uh, let's see, so we're looking for volume. Obviously, we've got a load of texture for this thing, and oh, while we're here, these, uh, we're, we're not using the Hi-Fi one anymore because we've decided we don't like that. We're gonna use Classic, which is the thing I downloaded. I'll put a link in the uh, notes, so you can download too if you wanna play along at home. And, um, well, I have it unpacked in this directory right now, as you can see. Ta -da. Uh, eventually, we will get to the point where you do not have to unpack these, but right now you have to unzip them. They're just zip files. Don't be scared of them. Uh, text volume, and now uh, we have the volume skin thing. Now we're going to add the balance skin thing. That's easy enough. Okay. All right, now here comes all the magic numbers. Everyone's favorite part. We'll do these two first because they're easy. Okay, so um, this is effectively just a constructor in C. I mean, it's just so we have these really handy one-line things to set them up. So let's get through these because these numbers are going to be different, some of them. Okay, so the slider, we have the right one. Texture, we have the right one. The width and height is going to be different. Let's load all that up and f figure out where we are on this. No, we need the atlas is what we need. Atlas, balance, come here, balance, there we go. All right, here we go. 
we'll zoom in on this. Computer, enhance. Okay, so we need to know the width and the height of the thing, although technically that should be in the control, so let me load that real quick. Gimp, or in the main, I mean, in the main picture thingy thing. There we are. Okay, so zoomed in a little bit there. That's your volume control. This is your balance control here. And that thing is, okay, there we go, 38 by 13. Okay, not 68, 38, because it's smaller than the volume, as you can see. 13, and it's positioned at 177.57. Okay, and what's after that? So we got rid of these things, that thing's done, that's done. We know the knob width and the knob height. Just the guy all the way at the bottom. Come back, there we go. Is that it? Okay, there we go. It's 14 by 11, that's why it's the same on these, okay. And these are the same size, right? That's how they get you. Yeah, they are, okay. 14 by 11, so we know the knob width and the knob height. Whoops. That. Then we need to know the unpressed and pressed, which I think is the same. 1542 and 422. Yep, and 0422. Yeah, those did not change. Okay, good. Number of frames, I think, is the same, but let's count it out because you don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Okay, it's still twenty-eight. Same number of frames of animation. Uh, the frame width is definitely not sixty-eight. Let's zoom in and see what that looks like. Oh, the frame width. width. Oh, it's, it's the whole frame, so how much it would take to get to the next part. So that width is still... Oh, it's 47 now. Okay, so it's still smaller. Smaller image, okay. The height, however, of the frame, which includes these parts here, which aren't actually used, uh, is 15. That's still the same, okay. And the initial value... Now, the initial value of the volume is 1 because we have the volume all the way up by default. The balance you want in the center, so we're going to say 0 0.5. These can go. We're going to add one more thing here, though, because we have to deal with what I call these things before. Frame X offset. There we go. Let's get those. Let's stick those in, he in here. Um, frames const int frame x offset const const int frame y offset and then we have our frame width and frame height let's go on the same line let's not get ridiculous here um, and again this is just an obscenely obnoxious amount of parameters to call to a function but this is effectively just a constructor so we can do one line function calls just to set the thing up and blast that data out and be done with it. Um, okay, so frame width, frame height, we need to add frame x and y offset to this. x offset equals this, which is why these are just basically lines spent pushing the same variables around to a different thing. So frame offset, there we go, cool. Um, Although, to be fair, I feel like the, the, I always worry about this kind of bulk, but you think about all this thing does already, and we're still under five, we're still under 500 lines of code, so that's kind of impressive when you think about it. I'm pretty pleased about that. All right, um, let's see here. So that'll get me that. Then we need to make sure we draw it correctly. Let's, let's look for volumes more, see if there's anything else I missed here. All right, it's loading that, setting up the thing, and that's the end of volume. Okay, so we got all of that, and that's good. Um, what else? What else? Let's see. We gotta draw the thing. Draw slider. Yeah, we gotta draw this thing at the right place still, so. Um, yeah. Let's see. Where are you at? Where are you at? I mean, I guess the non-textured version is right, because there's no bitmap to worry about, but in here we need to... We get the frame index. Okay, so we need the source wise. This, this, this is where we decide which part of the bitmap to draw from for the slider. We have it hard-coded to zero 
for the x coordinate because, of course, you know, we assume it would never ever frame x offset be not zero, but it is now, so we're going to fix that. Frame x offset and source y is what? Frame height. Okay, let's just, again, they all start at zero right now, but we'll, in case we get screwed by this later, we'll just make sure there's a frame offset there too. So we should be drawing to the right place, width and height, for the destination rack, that's right, okay. And that moves ahead by frame height every time. Yeah, okay, that's good. So, good, good, I think we're good here. Yeah, okay, so that should draw it. All right, let's, let's see if it works. Oops, screwed some things up here. No member named text balance. That's true, I did not add it. Because I did not start searching for the word volume from the top. That was foolish of me. Text balance. Um, yeah, okay, that should fix that. Let's see. Oh, yes, and I forgot to update these. Okay, so we added frame X and Y offset. So there's three, th th there's three things after this, so let's go add these in here. Frame, X, Y, offset, one, two, three. No. Wait. Frame width, frame height, initial value. Okay, yeah, so it's right here. Okay, so um, for our existing one, it's just zero, zero, because it was the top left corner. But in this one, it's... What is it? Let's find out. So we got to skip this part of the frame which is 9n. Okay, so go x offset is 9. These still start at the very top, so 0 for the y offset, and that should do that. And then we're happy. Let's see if it runs. Um, okay. <laughs> um, huh, okay. I don't know where my background went. I'm going to look for that in a moment. Right, we do have volume there somewhere. Oh, it's all the way in. Well, there you go. You probably can't hear that on my microphone, but the balance is definitely working. And There we go. Okay. Stop. I don't know where my background went. Let's figure that out real quick. Let's see. Um, let me think. Where did you go? Did I, oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> All right. We should probably put up some sort of warning if that's missing, but um, we misspelled the file name. That was our problem. So now we should actually have a... There you go. Okay, it came back. So one thing I'm noticing here is we have our initial value, but where is the slider? It's This should be at 1, but it's at 0. And this should be at centered, but it's at 0. So, And it'll jump to whatever. Oh. oh, that's interesting, too. Okay, hang on. One bug at a time. Let's deal with that real quick. Uh, okay, so the problem is we initialize this, and we initialize the knob, but we set the knob with height direct uh, destination x. Yeah, okay. We set the knob to the left upper left of the slider itself, and we never change it despite what this initial value is. So let's try and do that real quick here. All right, so... So that would be... Let me think my way through this real quick. This would start at... The offset would be... Where? Where the slider's starting. But then you want it to be from there, plus some percentage based on the initial value of the destination racks of the of the width of the slider so let's do we'll cast this to a float although i think when we multiply this by a float it would up it would convert to it anyway but that's okay um times initial value okay so let's just initial value and these might be greater than or equal to that. Th these asserts may be just completely unnecessary because these are just all hard-coded 
right down here, but let's just, just to make sure these are definitely here. So if it's definitely between zero and one, multiplying this will definitely give you a number between zero and the width of the control of the slider. So that's good, we'll do that. And then let me think here. Plus, no, minus, this also has to be a float, knob width divided by 2.0f. Because that, yeah. Because you want, this would give you the knob, the point, the, the left hand side of the knob would be at this point, but you want the center of the knob to be on this point. So, we're going to subtract it by half the size of uh, width of the knob so that the center of the knob is at the point where the value is. So, okay, that should do that. Is that right? Am I missing something on this? Let me think for a moment here. Um, I think this should be okay. I feel like I'm missing something, though. Oh, I bet I know. Okay, I, I, I'm missing two things here, actually. Okay, so good this is a, this is an integer already but this is going to get cast to an integer which is not a surprising thing but before we cast this to an integer wait hang on a second i need this to be that whole thing there's so many parentheses in this i'm so sorry it's going to get a little bit more parenthesized too as we go on so plus 0 0.5 f so what we're going to do is we're going to take this magic floating point thing uh and just in case this thing is closer with all this stuff to the next pixel up. Like say you're instead of, if this is at pixel 4.6, cause it's a floating point number, then you really want that to, when you cast to an int be a five instead of cutting all the way down to four. So you want to round to the nearest end. So when you add half the half to it, it'll, if it, if that's, if you're at five or higher, 0.5 or higher in your value, that will bump you to the next one. So that when you cast it to an int and it truncates, you end up rounded to the closest end in so many words. So we do that, and that gets us that, plus five, and that'll get us that. Constant, that, that is a lot of tap dancing right there, but I think, oh, you know, let's throw one more parentheses in there, why not? Just so this int is very clearly operating on this whole magic gobbledygook right here. Okay, and then just for the sake of things, because we're gonna assign this to slider, knob, Dest rect x, but we're going to do an SDL clamp on this because um, since you're you're subtracting this by half, or you're going all the way to the full end of the thing, you don't want the slider to go past the edge of uh, you don't want the knob to go past the edge of the slider. So we'll do knob x. We don't want to go lower than dx, and we don't want to go higher than dx plus width minus knob width so that no part of the knob can go past the edge on that side. It's a real mouthful there, but we got it. We got it done. Okay, so theoretically that's going to fix our knob initial position. Let's find out. Okay, see, now they are the volume's all the way up, and this is all the way in the center where it should be, so that seems like that's good. Good, good, good. Good, good. Oh, that's going to bother me. So I'm just holding the mouse down and sliding between the two, and it's just picking up whichever one the mouse is over instead of, yeah, and then if you leave it, yeah, okay, so. Well, that's going to bother me so much. Okay, we're going to fix that in a second. Does that do it with the buttons, too? Oh, well, that's an interesting bug. Huh, okay. I'm going to fix those, too. Okay, so we have balance. Oh, also, this is the thing. I don't think we're going to fix today because I can already tell now that I've seen this and it's going to annoy me, I'm going to want to fix that and we're going to run out of time. But um, one thing you'll notice that now that we have the skin where you can see why the, va the value of having all these animation frames for the, the slider, see how this turns green as you go lower and it turns red as you go higher? That's good, but the balance is not supposed to do that. It's doing the same thing, green at the bottom, red at the top. But the way the balance slider is supposed to work in Winamp, and we're going to have to fix this later because I'm not doing it right now. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, I don't have it here. Hang on one second. GIMP, classic, balance. 
is that what the Winamp wants you to do on these skins is when you're in the center, they want it to be green, and when you're either far to the left or far to the right, you want it to turn more red. So the way that you do this is different for balance sliders versus volume sliders, and we're going to fix that later. I'm just making note of that right now, but we're going to have to deal with that at a later time. Okay, I want to, in the meantime... Do I still have a window open for this? Okay, let's get rid of you for a second. All right, here we go. Um, let's deal with this. Okay. So right now we have... Each button has a state called pressed, which we set as we push the mouse button down on a specific button. But this is a bad way to do this because you can't ever have more than one button that's pressed at the same time. So we're going to take that out of there. And in the skin structure itself, we're going to keep track of, and I may regret this later, but for now this works, just a single pointer to the button that is currently pressed, or null if nothing is pressed. So let's go set that up real quick. Um, okay, where'd we go, where'd we go, where'd we go? There we are. So here's our mouse handling code down here. So let's deal with that real quick. Let's see. Um, let me think about this for a second. Okay, let's try and do this. First things first, these can no longer be a fall through case. We're going to need to do button up and button down separately. Deal with that in a second. Uh, let's deal with button down first. So, let me think about this. We're definitely still going to need to know the point. First off, and, and again, we'll probably change this later, but E, button, button, huh, equals, what do they call these things? SDL, include, SDL, mouse, SDL, button, left. I could have come up with that. Sometimes you don't even have to ch ch check the documentation. You should just be like, YOLO, I'm going for it. Uh, if it doesn't equal that. And just break out immediately. We're only we will probably care about other mouse buttons eventually, but right now we only care about the left one. So just drop the event entirely if it's not the left mouse button we're talking about, up or down. Um, okay, let me think about this. So what we want to do here, and we don't have to check for pressed anymore because we're in the mouse button down event. It's we don't since we're not sharing the, the same code between these two, we don't need to check for this specifically. We know it's definitely a pressed thing now, so and we do know, need to know the point. So we'll keep the track of that, and then we will say, okay, we want to go through all the buttons here. Let's see. Let's get rid of this and just do in i. Okay, so if not skin. Is that a pointer? Hang on. Skin. Sorry, I'm just looking for something here. Oh, it's, it is it isn't a pointer. Okay. Oh, it is a pointer because I have it. I pass it to handle events. Okay. It was right there in front of me the whole time. How embarrassing. So, okay, so if nothing is pressed right now, we don't have a button that we're tracking, then let's look through all the buttons. Oh, that maybe should be an assert. We'll leave it like this for now, just for robustness sake. All right, so. You know what? Okay, let's do this. So before we would go through this array, bounce all these back, because I think this code's about to die. Um, we go through the entire array of all the buttons to see if the mouse button was pressed and if that press was inside of this button. We're going to keep that for a second because we still care if the point is inside of this button. Oh, we can keep that. Ah, mm, all right. We'll keep that too. Okay. So if the point is inside of this button and nothing was pressed in the skin, then we are going to make you the pressed button. Equals button. Cool. All right, and then we can stop looking at that point because we found the thing that the mouse is over, so yay. Okay, good. So we don't need this stuff anymore. Okay, so it is super easy in Event Handler to end up in this gobbledygook right here, where it's like, which button was it? Is it this? 
do stuff for that. Is it this? Do stuff for that. And the problem is when you end up with a lot of code in what is effectively the mouse click catcher. Um, but also you end up, look how far in we're indented here. We're at like 25, 20, what, 25? That's weird. All right, we're, we're you know, we're, we're several, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're eight indentations deep here to do the code for these buttons. So let's move this stuff out of here because this is going to drive me nuts. And also we can get rid of this fix me handle more buttons here. That's obnoxious. Goodbye. Goodbye. So let's move this stuff out of here for one second. I'm just going to put it here for now. Obviously this is not going to compile until we do some more, but we're going to take care of that right now. Type def void click function. And now we are actually writing a GUI toolkit by accident, but we're going to try and keep this as simple as possible. Every button, come here, gets a click function if it wants one. Call it clicked, I guess. I don't know. I haven't decided. We'll call it clicked for now. Let's see what if I change my mind. So this is a function pointer. We're saying uh, when we click, well, once we hook this up, when we click on a button, it will call this function. So let's add that skin button texture. We'll put this right here. Click function clicked. Click function, I guess. You know what, let's, let's not call it clicks. That's a past tense sort of thing. Let's just do that. Okay, so skin button needs to have a click function. Let's do that, if it wants one. And for now, the slider will not have one. We'll just leave that null. But when we initialize these things, these things are definitely going to want some as we hook them up. Right now, we only have a few hooked up. It was, I think, previous clicked pause clicked and stop right and we haven't hooked up the other ones yet stop, clicked I'm probably gonna change those names later but for now they're fine and these we don't have plain stuff hooked up so we'll just make these null for now and we'll add these in later as we want to and the skin sliders don't, you, the, clicking the knob is not something you need to handle as a clicky thing. So that's fine. Okay, so when I go up previous click, pause click, stop clicked. Let me go find my things. Static void previous clicked void. And look at this. Look at all these indentations that are going to go away. Oh, it feels so good. Mmm, I love it. Oops, come back. Yeah, it's good stuff. It feels so good. This function is ridiculous. We're going to fix that later. Don't need that break anymore. That can go away. Static void pause. Clicked. This is a global, but that's really obnoxious. Oh, that's a global. Hmm. Oh, we paused the auto device. That's fine. I was going to say threading issue, but that's fine. It's fine for now. And let's break so that can go. Okay, good. And static void stop clicked void. Okay. That's just stop audio. Feels good. Alright. I can go. Cool. Okay. So now we don't have a stupid little thing, but that's really nice. So okay, so now our mouse button down is much smaller, because all that logic is no longer in the event handler, which is good. So now it's coming through saying if we don't have anything pressed, that's a good little just sanity check. Go through all the buttons. If this button is the thing we just clicked on, mark it as the thing that's being pressed down and get out. Now let's do it again in here. Actually, let's just cut and paste all of this because it's going to. Okay, if skin pressed, go through all the sliders. And if the pointer is in the skin slider, If the thing is inside the, the rectangle of the slider anywhere, then we're going to treat the knob, because this is a button, it's like a little encapsulated class, that's nice. Uh, the thing that's quote unquote pressed will be the knob of the slider. And then we'll break out of there. OK. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, and we're going to do one more thing here because this is the part that really bothered me. This can go. Boom. Okay, so if we finally, between one of these things, manage to press something, we're going to call SDL capture mouse. I think that just takes a boolean like that. We'll find out. And what capture mouse does, see, we're 30 minutes into this and you're finding out a new SDL API. Aren't you so glad you tuned in? Mm. What Capture Mouse does is basically says, when I drag the mouse, or when I'm moving the mouse and it leaves the window, keep treating it as if it is part of the, it's still inside the window. So you'll get negative mouse coordinates, but it will keep tracking the mouse and it won't let other windows uh, track the mouse. And, uh, it, it takes control, it, it captures it to your window. Now, if you lose focus, then SDL will automatically break that capture. Like if, you know, a, something pops up so that your system does not just go to garbage, but but this will let you click on a slider and drag, and if the cursor leaves the window, it'll keep functioning with that slider, which is what you tend to expect from a UI. So we're going to capture the mouse if it's pressed, if we decide something has been pressed. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, so then we need to deal with mouse button up, which I'm going to move below mouse button down because honestly... We tend to think of, we, we read things from top to bottom, so we're going to think of the first thing that would happen and then the second thing that would happen. So I'm moving that below it. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We need to know what point this happened at. We ignore it if it's not the, mouse, the left mouse button for now. And then we want to go through here, and we only care about this if something is pressed. So... Let's do that. If skin pressed. I switch between treating these as booleans and treating them as an actual comparison to null. One's not better than the other, it's just how I feel or what I feel is more expressive in the moment. I mean, if you're saying it's not pressed, that also means something. That'll that they do the same thing in this case, but I'm trying to decide which is more expressive human language. It's just how it goes. So, okay, if you're no longer Oh, except I, you know, except I did that backwards. It does not equal null, except I said it's that. So, if skin pressed does not equal null. So we're saying if it is pressed, so yeah, it would be like that. Putting an exclamation point there, that's not what you wanted. Okay, so if it's pressed, then we want to, first off, uncapture the mouse, because you don't really want to hold this capture the mouse longer than you have to, because um, it's just bad for the desktop in general. Generally, you want the mouse to behave correctly and it won't while it's captured. So you want to, to capture it in little bursts, like while I have the mouse down. Um, we have other things like SDL set relative mouse mode. If you just want to SDL true. If you just want to own the mouse, like you're doing a first person shooter and it's like the mouse is mine for possibly hours while this person plays. But that's a totally different thing. Capture mouse is meant to be for very short bursts of like UI specific magic. Um, in fact, that function was added for Unreal Engine 4 uh, when they started building a GUI on top of SDL. Um, okay, so if it was pressed, we're going to uncapture the mouse because it's no longer pressed. We're in the mouse button up thing. Um, and then we want to do our click thing. If skin... So we know what's pressed is this thing. This is why it wasn't a Boolean. It's actually a function pointers, we need to know which thing is it called click? It's called click function. Oh, well that's actually good. I forgot to assign it in here, so skin button is the last thing in there, so let's put this in here. Where'd you go? Okay, this is gone. We no longer have press, but we do have click function. It's always good to catch these things as you go. Okay, so where'd you go? Okay, if if it has a function, and if it's null, we don't try to call it, because obviously you don't want to dereference a null pointer. Um, skin pressed click function. We just call it like that, and then I'll call it. And then, of course, no matter what, after you're done capturing the mouse, okay, if 
it's pressed. Yeah, okay, so then we just want to make sure we skin press null. Equals null. We set that to null. Um, you know what? I'm going to go a bit further with this, too. I think... I, I don't know if this is actually the way desktop environments work, but... Um, Let's only call the click function if they let go of it while it's in the inside of the thing. For example, where's my thing at here? Okay, so it's gonna blast some music at you. So when you that's really loud. Good thing we have a volume control. So while you while you're in it, if you click you want it to do something. But if you were to drag Alright. If you were to drag out of this thing and let go you would want the button to pop back up, but you wouldn't want to treat it like you would click the button. So, uh, and right now this is, since we haven't compiled this yet, the last place we left this is when you push down on it, it activates it, but we want, we always want users to have an ability to get out of something. So like they go, oh, I didn't mean to click that and they can slide off of it and let go. I think that's how things work uh, in general across desktops. I will say that Winamp works the way I just described. XMMS does not. XMMS treats it as a click when you let go, regardless of where you let go, uh, whether you're on the button or not. But I think this is probably a better idea. So we're going to say, um, where did I have that? I had it up here before. If in point and rack. Yeah, okay, so let's get that real quick. Point done. If, the, if it has a click function and the point is inside skin, and it's still inside the thing you're pressing down. You haven't slid out of the thing. Then call the click function. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And then no matter what, since you've let go of the mouse, we want to set skin press to null. Okay. I think that's good. I think that's right. What's motion doing down here? Hmm. Okay, we're going to change that in a second too, but let's... Well, okay. Actually, I guess we can probably just let me think for a moment about this. Yeah, I guess we. I mean, we still need to know where it's moving to, but we don't need in in the slider. We don't need to know if it's pressed anymore because we're keeping track of that directly now. So we can skip that. But we do need to know the point it's at. So yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay. If it's pressed. That's in there. Okay, what what is us uh, handle? We don't care if this is pressed anymore, so that can go away. Um, we don't need to set that up anymore. I guess we do need to know if it is pressed so that we can. Yeah, my fan just kicked on again. What is that? Why are you doing that? I don't know. Okay, I guess we need to make sure. We probably need to stop it if it's currently running. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we don't need to track pressed anymore. In fact, there is no pressed variable. But we do need to know if skin, which is not a pointer in this case, pressed equals the knob. Because we don't want to move the slider unless we are literally pressing the knob down. Um, but I think we have this set up in mouse button down. Yeah, if it's anywhere, we'll, we'll accept the knob is pressed if it's you if you push the mouse down anywhere in the thing. I think that should do it, right? Maybe, I don't know. Let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Nope, hang on. Got a bunch of things to fix here. Previous clicked undefined. Oh, that's true because Um, okay, you know what? These are just, they, they need to be pre-declared, but I'm going to just move them up. I don't even care. Texture, knit, skin button. I'm just trying to find a reasonable place to stick this stuff. And there may not be one, but... Oh, I don't know. Let's see. It's got to be below stop audio, open new audio. Okay, let's do it right here. This seems like a safe place to put it. We'll find out if I'm wrong about that. I'm gonna put a fix me on these two. Fix me, maybe a better name, because that's gonna bother me. 
Okay. Um, all right. Does that fix all my problems? Let's find out. No. Paused. See, this is the problem moving code around. Suddenly things are not declared in the right place. Fix me, move this later. Uh huh. Okay. Um, okay, sure. Why not? Your wish is my command. Previous clicked. Uh, I put that in the wrong place. Sorry. That was my fault. Put them in the wrong place. In there. Okay. Where my guy go? Oh, okay. <clears throat> if skin pressed equals button, then we're pressed, and they can decide what to do with that. Okay. Every time, every time. Okay. So drawing the slider wants to make sure that the slider has not got a bad value, and this is why you put assertions in, because sometimes your assertions are wrong, or, or the assertion is right, but your assumptions change. So this is one of those fine times. Draw a slider. So slider is checking the slider value. Value equals, and we change this. See, this was true when we said this because there used to be a thing. It would check that we had a point in the rectangle, but we're not doing that anymore. So now, because now you can capture the mouse and go completely outside the window, let alone outside the control. So we're going to do const float new value equals this, which is the same as before. Put that up at the top, because I don't think we use this anywhere. Yeah, okay. Are we moving things here? Slider knob is moving. Destrect is that with that pointer. I guess that's okay. Slider destrect. I think that's probably okay. So same calculation, but just in here, when we actually set the actual slider value, we're going to make sure it's clamped to this. So if the mouse is doing something wonky, in the same way that we clamped the knob before we assigned it, just to make sure that it can't slide out of the thing. Likewise here, because the mouse can now, now you'll get slider ev mouse events for and you know, slider motion, let's call that. Why not? Okay. Um, You'll, you'll get things that are, since we're capturing the mouse, we'll get points that are wildly outside of where you think they're going to be. So, yeah, okay, that's good. Because before we used to check to see if it was inside the thing. So that should, okay, fix my assertion. Yep, okay, there. And you'll see as I'm riding over to the other one, since this is pressed, it won't jump to the other control. It only pays attention when it's pressed. I can move it when I'm outside the window. I can, you know... Do whatever. It'll jump to the right place. Okay, this seems to be working. Okay, good, good, good. And then over here, I'm pushing this down, but it doesn't do it until I do a mouse up, but I'm going to do it outside, and it ignores it until I do one inside right here, and then it plays. Yep, okay, that's good. All right. Wow, that's like a real UI toolkit. That's pretty wild. Um, okay, I, this seems like a good stopping point. We still have stuff we need to do, but this is... Oh, we got so much done today in 45 minutes, so just just to see where we are real quick here. What all did we do? Okay, we uh, added a generic click function so we don't have our god-awful giant switch statements, 17 indentations deep anymore. Um, we handled the balance thing being wonky that it doesn't start at the same place that the other volume thing does. 
uh, we hooked up the balance slider. It wasn't there before. Um, we have just one global place where, uh, one uh, skin specific place where we deal with things being pressed instead of each of them. We got rid of a global variable. Uh, we moved all this stuff to be a little cleaner and more generic. I like that. Um, we dealt with balance stuff. We fixed this knob being in the wrong initial place. Gosh, we wrote a lot of code today. This is wild. Look at this. This goes on forever. I love it. And somehow we added a, a new line here. I'm not sure how that happened. That's going to bother me. I'm getting rid of it. Why are you there? Stop. There you go. I must have hit return at some point. I'm sorry. Diff. How many? How big is this diff today? 300. <laughs> okay. So the entire program right now is 516 lines of C code, and we made 367 lines worth of changes today. And I understand some of that's like this two line change is count as four, but you know, I mean, that's a lot of changes for 45 minutes. I, I'm pretty impressed with myself right now, and um, like the, the the code quality increased on this dramatically for the changes we made, and a lot of little annoying things that are code polish where you would be annoyed but still be able to use the program. Like we fixed so much of that stuff today. So th this is good for as little as maybe it feels like we did. We did a lot. So, all right. I think that's good for today. Let's call that a stopping point. That was 45 minutes, uh, 46 now. Uh, don't forget to join my Patreon. Uh, and if you join it, don't forget to go click on the thing saying, hey, do you want your name in the credits so that you can add yourself to the magic spreadsheet so that I don't have to you know, do these pouty little things anymore. Sad face, eternal tears. Um, uh, get your name in there so that you know people will think you're famous and important uh, someday, just like hopefully they will think that about me someday. All right, I love you all. I will see you next time. Have a good day.